It's indeed time that we have a national conversation as a country. The economy is tanking, taxes are rising, things are going down the tubes. All we can hear is all about political peccadillos and chicanery. It is time that we had a conversation in this country. It is time that we declutter and have a real conversation. And this is Siasa Bomba. I am Dibala Ine. Exceedingly glad that you're joining us on Siasa Bomba. Remember the hashtag is hashtag Siasa Bomba. So let's continue. Let's continue our pace with the conversation. The subject at hand today is about affirmative action. Why is it a holy grail in this country, right? Since independence, we've never really shaken it into place. And that's why we want to delve deeper and see what is a real problem. I may just remind you that the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Article 27, subsection 8 provides for affirmative action where the states or the state is required to take legislative and other measures to ensure that no more than two thirds of the members of elective or appointive bodies are of the same gender. Article 81 further reiterates that the same rule should be applicable in elective public bodies, in Kenya public institutions, and in particular, in the National Assembly, gender balance is skewed against women. Thus, the gender rule generally tries to bring in women into the limelight. And that's why we're having this conversation today. And uh, I just want to introduce my panelists today who will drive a show with me. Uh, joining me is uh, Wilfred Lichuma. She's a former chair of the National Gender and Equality Commission. And also I have Nathaniel Mungare, who is a national spokesperson of the Money uh, national uh, Amani National Congress Party. Congress Party, yes. right? I normally know it as Amani Party, uh -huh. right? So we want to drill deeper and find out what is the issue. So let me just begin with you, Nathaniel. Yes. Why is Kenya unlikely to achieve 33 percent uh, female representation without the help of affirmative action? We, first of all, Debal, thank you for having me. Uh, it is not that we are unlikely to achieve the 33% gender rule. We could even achieve more. It depends on our attitudes and the affirmative action policies and laws that we put in place to progressively push uh, the Kenyan electorate towards seeing more capacity uh, in especially women. Because historically, they are the ones who have been marginalized. If you look at uh, independence, when we battered this country, the people who are disenfranchised are women because we do not even have a single member of parliament in the independence legislature. Mm -hmm. Over time, we've seen the, uh, the progression in the representation of female, especially in uh, parliament, in the legislature. Uh, you saw around uh, 1997, we had about 4.1% of the women elected in parliament. 202, it went up to 8.1. Uh, 207, it draws further. So there's this progressive, uh, the Kenyan society has realized that more women have capacity to lead. So it is not something that is unlikely. Mm -hmm. It is something that is likely depending on which affirmative uh, policies and laws that we put in place. So we need to go out there and be able to have more women capacity built, especially from political parties, because our Kenyan politics is structured along political parties. So we need to have political parties uh, fielding uh, more women, especially through the elective seats. Mm -hmm. And then in the process, we will achieve the two-third gender rule uh, in parliament and in uh, elective and appointive bodies in this country. Mm -hmm. So it is something that uh, we need to be very intentional and deliberate about, uh, women representation. And uh, Article 100 of the Constitution speaks into this. Uh, the special interest groups that are enumerated in, in that <coughs> article, the women uh, are number one in that list. So there has to be very deliberate uh, moves. We've seen attempts uh, by several bills. Uh, we had the Chepkonga bill in 2015. We have had the Duale bill. Uh, also uh, trying to find ways of making sure that women are the center of leadership in this country. Uh, the Chepkonga <coughs> bill uh, was basically amending various uh, pieces of legislation. It was called the, th the two-thirds gender rules uh, laws. Uh, it amended several, it proposed to amend several legislations. Uh, Duale also attempted uh, again, but all those bills were defeated uh, because there were many interests at play uh, political parties did not come out strongly, mm -hmm. despite the fact that my political party leader, uh, Mwishmiwa Musalem Mdavadi, and my party, we strongly came out and said that we need to have uh, the voices of women. But then again, we need to have women 
also coming out strongly uh, to fight for competitive elective <coughs> positions uh, in the sphere of politics because you cannot have yours if you are not in the space. So we need to have deliberately women coming out and being protected to vie for these seats. Thank you. Let me come uh, to Winfred. Uh, you've also been the former chair of uh, National Gender and Equality Commission trying to push this particular envelope as well. But it seems we are batting our heads on the wall, right? And if uh, Nathaniel is saying here that, uh, yeah, we are citing, you know, the 2011, uh, that is 2012, uh, the Supreme Court of Kenya, uh, which held that gender equity and affirmative action are right for women under Article 82, subsection B is progressive in nature and not an immediate realization could this advisory opinion by the Supreme Court also be the, 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 the tripping wire that is actually slowing off the mark and the uptick of the two-third two gender rule? Uh, thank you. I have listened to him and uh, I was smiling. Because he's uh, making he, a lot he's, of sense. No, he's speaking like a politician. <laughs> of course, <laughs> like a politician. <laughs> you know, what is ailing this country is that people do not want to comply to the law. Court decisions are not complied with. Politicians have taken themselves to mean it is a game for men. Now, I want to get this right. There is nothing wrong with affirmative action. Affirmative action is allowed even internationally. Kenya is a state member to the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. In Article 4, it provides for states to have affirmative action. <clears throat> the Beijing action in 1995 did guarantee that women must be represented in countries at 30%. Let me bring you back home, near home. Maputo Protocol at African level has an affirmative action for women at 30%. So Kenya did not commit any crime by putting the two-third gender rule in the Constitution. And you know this is a debate we have had for many years. I was in court. I was the chair of the Gender Commission. So I drafted even the Dwale bills. So I know what is in for women for this country. What are we seeing? We are seeing resistance from politicians. His Excellency the President, his debut in Parliament, was through an affirmative action. So I, I think let's not look at affirmative action to mean it's only for women. We have men under Article uh, 97 who, are, who came to parliament via affirmative action. They are not women. So clearly what is ailing this country is we want to condemn the affirmative action. It's not being done only here. Rwanda that is leading us 62% That's an affirmative action. 30% of women in Rwanda must be in parliament. This must come together with goodwill. Kenya does not have goodwill. President Kagame has goodwill. Because, of course, the system in Rwanda is a proportional representation, the PR, which Kenya totally has rejected. Mm -hmm. yes. <clears throat> Kenya has the first past the post system. It has never, never realized equality anywhere in the world. Uh, he said they are going back to the electorate to vote in women. That's where we go wrong. Affirmative action is supposed to compel political parties first to give women winnable seats. So winnable seats means uh, your party is popular in Western. If I stand in Western on a strong political party and the party supports me, I will win. That's why Millie has continued winning in her, in her popular area. But I mean, if I come from Central and ANC gives me a party, nobody will elect me. So clearly, I think we need to get this right. Affirmative action is time bound. And as a gender expert, affirmative actions have been used all over the world to boost the number of women in parliament. Because clearly, the first past the post, where I, first of all, I need money to go and buy. I need my party to support me, which parties mostly do not support. I know I was talking to some of the members uh, who have made it, and they had to give their parties money to be given the seat. 
the tickets rather to run. But again, even when you get the ticket, you are not guaranteed that the electorate are sensitive enough to women to vote you. Because clearly we're coming from a point where women are looked at as weak leaders that they cannot lead. Right. But let me just ask you, first of all, uh, why do you think uh, it is prone to actually lean towards you know, the gender perspective when we talk about affirmative action? Because that is where it's been leaning. It does. Briefly. It mm -hmm. does because of patriarchy. This country, if we don't dismantle patriarchy, for example, I'm called Mrs. Lichuma. Lichuma is my husband's name. I would have been very happy to keep my, 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 my father's name or my own name necessarily, not even my father's but name. Why, but you see, we are why, coming, why didn't you keep it? I mean, the law would get in trouble with it. When I, if, if anything ever happens and I want to identify myself, we are identifying ourselves with the male. I belong to my father. I am married by a man, so I take his name. I mean, the women in this country have said no, and they will keep their maiden names. But I tell you, if anything happens and maybe they want to go into a succession case and you still are in your maiden name, many things will come up. Prove you are married to him. So patriarchy is killing us. Mm -hmm. And we run into trouble of taking patriarchy to parliament. So men still want to look at women in parliament like, uh, Madam, you are here to serve tea not to be hard, and it, it's challenging for this country to vote in women. Take the gender-based violence. Right, before we come to the gender-based violence, let, let me just come back to Nathaniel, because as she's speaking, I'm also reminded about other women who are not really in support of uh, affirmative action. Gladys Bostrole, uh recently, I think in 2018, she also was coming up with a draft bill to actually, you know, do away with affirmative action, that women should go down for elective posts, run like any other politician, and win a seat as it were. And I think she got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, umbrage from a lot of people, especially the women, uh, as far as that is concerned. I don't know if it took any, any, any light of day as far as seeing, you know, the, the draft bill in, in parliament is concerned. But women have been fighting against women. Let me tell right, you. With their affirmative let, me, action. let me answer yeah. that. I wanted, I, I wanted, I don't know if uh, Nathaniel yeah. is oh, aware of this, oh, then we'll oh, come back to you. Just a moment, just a okay. moment. Yeah, okay. we'll okay. come, yeah, we'll come back to you. Yes, uh, thank you. First of all, there is something uh, uh, the good uh, mama said about uh, speaking like a politician. First of all, personally and in our party, we support affirmative action because we understand the disenfranchisement that the women in Kenya have gone through. And secondly, there is a very important perspective that you are bringing on board. And it's, it's, it's placed squarely if you look at, uh, she is a lawyer and a competent one, if you look at Article 38 of the Constitution, uh, it talks about every Kenyan has a right, political choices, and every Kenyan has a right to form, participate in political activities and in forming a political party. So there is an inconsistency uh, between uh, Kenyans having political choices uh, in terms of choosing women uh, through uh, elective seats and the affirmative action uh, that is, should be realized under Article 97 and 98 of the Constitution. So this inconsistency is what the Attorney General went to court uh, to seek an advisory opinion yeah, on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you rightly put it, and, and she has also said that mm -hmm. the Kenyan society is highly patriarchal. These are things that we need to invest a lot of resources uh, in civic education, mm -hmm. uh, particularly, to educate the masses and even political parties deliberately to th through their party lists, uh, putting more women in the list. Currently, uh, we are compelled by the law mm -hmm. uh, that before we submit the party lists uh, to IEBC, there are certain quantums that we must have for women, uh, especially if you look at uh, the composition of the National Assembly and the Senate. Uh, squarely, we cannot, there are 12 seats that are reserved for women in the National Assembly. There are 16 seats that are reserved for women in the Senate. S those are things that uh, a political party must nominate those kind of genders. Uh, we have no otherwise. Even, even uh, at the party list level, IBC can reject a list. Uh, it has the power to reject a list if it doesn't comply. Mm -hmm. What I'm agreeing uh, with Wilfred <coughs> is that we need to do more. Mm -hmm. And she has proposed the issue of proportional representation system. Uh, that system is very good. And personally, as a person, I support that system. Because it's a very good electoral system uh, that compels, it puts political parties uh, at an advantage of having more women so that we achieve the gender, the two-third gender rule more easily because a closed list is mm -hmm. submitted before the elections. 
So political parties have a chance, even before the elections, uh, to submit more women uh, for the party lists. So um, for me, I think a lot needs to be done, and I'm not speaking as a politician in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to be very deliberate. For instance, uh, she talked about has uh, political parties' capacity building more women to vie for seats. Uh, they are not getting a lot of support. Remember current in Kenya, only two political parties are benefiting from the political parties fund. As a party, we are very intentional in wanting to support more women, mm. even through campaign financing. But the two parties in an unholy alliance, Jubilee and ODM, uh, they came together and sponsored a statute law, miscellaneous amendment, uh, of the Political Parties Act, Section 25, and removed uh, certain clauses of, initially it used to be that if you have three senators or three governors or three women reps, then you are entitled to a quarter of the political parties fund. They amended the word or to and to make it mandatory. So there are many political parties that were disenfranchised from benefiting from the political parties fund. So in the process, we are unable to appropriate funds internally in political parties to support women aspirants. So there is need to have more, I mean, to look at this uh, Section 25 of the Political Parties Act mm -hmm. so that we have adequate resources to support more women aspirants. But more fundamentally, if you look at the national constitution, it has put a minimum threshold that not less than 0.4% of the ordinary revenues uh, should be appropriated to the political parties fund. But the national treasury is not even complying with that minimum threshold. So we have to be very deliberate because our, our electoral system is uh, disadvantaging women. And that is what uh, Section 27.3 uh, of the Constitution said, that men and women are equal. And uh, there should be very deliberate uh, uh, affirmative actions uh, to bridge the equality gap uh, which she has talked about. So from my view, I think we need to be very uh, robust in having more women join political parties and uh, fill these women. Because if you visit many political parties in this country, women are either put in the women league and the youth are either put in the youth league. The mainstreaming of both youth and women is not happening in many political parties. So the problems are lying uh, with the political, the political parties. parties. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's where actually it's arising. Uh, if we fix it from the political parties uh, front, then on the national level, we will not be having the, the, you know, the issue of dissolution of, of parliament right now, an adversary from the attorney general. But I hope you've not lost your track of thought. No, 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 I, uh, no, 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 no. I want to I come back to yes. it, uh, especially when we make it look like women will not vote for fellow women or women do not support. I mean, th it's neither here nor there. When we Are was you when we were struggling with the two third gender rule bills. I will not name names. Some sitting member of parliament, female, who had been elected, thought women should go out and campaign. Just like uh, you said, Sholei is she's a first timer, uh, very excited, thinking it's very easy. I did it. Mm -hmm. But remember, even she had a lady who gave her a run for her money, mm -hmm. a young lady, who would have won if she just had a bit of some push. We had women who had been elected. And they kept telling me, no, we need this thing. Women should come out and, and campaign. They lost. You know how they're in parliament? Courtesy of the nomination. So you were elected previously. And you think you'll continue being elected. That's how not politics work. And we are asking for affirmative action to fix it once and for all. So that you are not chancing. I mean, we've done it in the county assemblies. Why can't we do it in the National Assembly? And we, how many county assemblies do we have? We are talking about assemblies that have more than 2,000 members. But these nominations, we're talking even from the women rep as well, mm. it was not meant to be in perpetuity, isn't it? These are sunset no, clauses as well. we haven't well. even tried. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't even could, tried. Could At the, the National Assembly, we haven't even tried. So clearly, for me, we have the answer, but we have refused. We, the answer lies in making opening up Article 97 and 98. And, and, and in the Senate, by the way, we almost got the number. We are minus, I think, one. One, yes. One senator. So if we went back and just educated the uh, members of public in the Senate, we are likely to get the numbers. Where the challenge is, is in the National Assembly. <coughs> 
No. And in the National Assembly, we have the women rep as well. We have but, the women I, rep. I want to talk about the women, women rep, especially with the funding that, uh, you know, it, it is yes. from uh, uh, the national agenda. Uh, that particular funding, if you may remind the me, the GAF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I want you just to, because even that particular fund, the women rep, the the attorney, not, not the attorney general, but the auditor general right now, he's frustrated because they cannot explain how they're using this particular money to, to steamroll aff affirmative action. Please, can you also link that with the constituency fund? Because why does it become an issue when we are talking no, no, about no, no, the women no, 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 no. and you no, have no, no, the no, constituency no, no, funds? Let's, let's not mix issues. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we are no, 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 you being too hard no, no. on the women. This is where I'm really coming on that front. Yeah, but don't women be too hard really on the women. women. Men have yeah. had constituency you have, funds. You have this particular fund to yes. steamroll your actions within the counties, but you're not doing They've it. They've done very and, and well. You, you say that, yes, we do not really have funding, but when you're given the funding, you cannot really account for it. Okay, the women have done very well, but let me ask you. Take my county, Kakamega. I get seven million that is in, 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 a, in a funding circle that is supposed to go to activities. Please help that rep uh, divide the seven million. Because I mean, we are making it look like the GAF has so much money. It doesn't. It's, you can't even compare with what the CDF gets. Yeah, but even that little money that you have with them. No, you but need also to be ask, about it. ask the members of parliament to also use part of the CDF because, I mean, they are, they, they are governing both men and women. Are they not? So, I mean, for me, where we lose the debate is where we begin to think, oh, women, push the women agenda. No, 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 no. Everybody in this country must push the women agenda. They are your mothers. They are your sisters. They are your grandparents. So why must the women be held to account to do the women issues when we have money? The president is also not putting in enough budgets to the gender ministry. I headed the gender commission. We had peanuts of money. So why can't we put money where the mouths are so that we educate the women and we don't make it a women issue? I want us to debate on gender as male versus women issue. We are talking of the young people, men, women. We are talking of the children, men, women. So I, I think I need to persuade you mm -hmm. that do not look at gender as women issues. We need gender for development. We were trying to debunk that particular yeah, so perception. Both and men I think that's why we're having the conversation. Women must come on the table and decide. So we are thinking about so Article 27, 8 is talking of affirmative action in appointive. Elective. And elective position. Why do we only run to the elective positions? Take the case we took to court where His Excellency did not meet the two third gender rule in the cabinet. appointment of the cabinet. Mm. We got a court decision saying it was unconstitutional. Has it changed? Of course not. Currently, they still don't meet the two third gender rule. So, until we have the political goodwill, my brother. Kenya will always remain behind. And in the region, we are lagging behind. Even Sudan that got independent the other day is doing better than us. I, I wanted to know, because I think also the CIC in, in Parliament as well, headed by Jeremiah Kioni, is coming up with a bill. There is a bill, actually. The representation of special interest groups. The 20, Yes, 2019. And I think in their political parties as well, they're, they're being you know persuaded and pushed that you know, they should have more nomination uh, seats for, for, for women as well. You are, uh, I think, privy to this particular bill. You can I illuminate more light on it and tell us what is happening with this particular bill. Uh, uh, where is it at as far as the reading is concerned? Uh, are we still having forces even within the National Assembly, as it were, who are against this particular bill? As we've seen, so many other bills surrounding, you know, affirmative actions are being shut down. First of all, Debal, I saw the bill when it was uh, at the drafting stage, uh, when it was, there was consultation around the bill, caucusing around that bill. Uh, the SIG bill, uh, basically, uh, is based to persuade political parties, as you've said, to consider having more women aspirants in the party ticket yes. so that we achieve uh, the, the affirmative uh, rule without necessarily bloating the wage bill. Because there are many studies that have been done by the Commission on Revenue Allocation. I'll be able to come uh, on them later. Uh, but basically, I want to agree first that political parties can help solve this impasse if only 
we go out there and do training programs, do civic programs from the political party level uh, to have more women first join political parties. Then after joining political parties, these women are a capacity built as politicians because political parties uh, are platforms or avenues to nurture women leaders and even leaders in general. So I think political parties have a big role to play in terms of uh, resolving this impasse that we are uh, that we are facing as a country. That, doesn't that particular SIG bill also seeks to amend the Political Parties Act? It seeks to amend uh, yes. some sections of the political parties, what, especially what around, yes. around the party lists. Uh, basically, it's, it's uh, on the party list. The, the party lists that are uh, submitted to IBC uh, are given uh, political parties to consider more women. And then secondly, uh, when women are running for the party primaries, there is a deliberate move to uh, support more women aspirants especially during the internal party primaries. So these are issues that political parties have the capacity to do. But the bar, let me tell you, many political parties in this country are bankrupt. They are, I mean, they are, they are, they are broke. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have are the- Are they parties or their briefcases? <laughs> I think they are briefcases. Uh, uh, you, you, can, you can use the term briefcase, but yes. if you said that word briefcase uh, before political parties, they will lynch you because uh, there is a process in which <laughs> somebody goes through to apply to become, I mean, the registered political party you need an office. is there. Yeah. You need an office. They, they, you need about 24,000 members. Uh, the political part, the registered political parties is there to ensure compliance with the Political Parties Act. So if you use the word briefcase before political parties, they will literally lynch you, especially these parties that you call them briefcase or small parties. And who are the majority? Actually, they constitute uh, the largest numbers in, uh, in the political parties liaison committee. Uh, and they're the ones running the show there. So the issue that uh, is at play here is political parties need to be capacity built. And I'll still go back to funding because the cost of election in this country is too high. For instance, mm -hmm. there is a campaign financing act that was passed in 2013 uh, that was putting maximum caps on budget and campaign expenditures for all the seats from presidential uh, press to the MCRS. That act has been postponed twice from being implemented uh, uh, because uh, there are special interests uh, that could have enabled, you know, th uh, through such actions is when we can have political parties uh, keenly coming out to support more women uh, through such laws and the, the caps that were put there. Uh, but you know that bill has been, uh, I mean, the act uh, has not been implemented thus far. So we need to have political parties uh, getting public funding through the political parties uh, fund so that there is, quant we can be able to place now requirements on political parties who are benefiting from the fund that you need to put certain quotas uh, to women programs within political parties internally. So that when we say um, uh, there is a woman aspirant running for a seat uh, through a party ticket, then the party is able to even print merchandise, uh, is able to even organize rallies, uh, mm -hmm. is able to visit the, the electoral area to go and campaign for that particular woman uh, candidate uh, for the seat. But without that, Political parties are only depending uh, from the benefactors, the, the partners they are able to get, and you know the limitations with partners. Mm -hmm. They can only go as long as they can. Uh, but the ball, uh, if you look at generally, there is a study that was done by the Commission on Revenue Allocation on the cost, the implication, uh, the cost of the cost of having uh, more women nominated if the public doesn't elect more women, and mm -hmm. and the cost was running into billions. Uh, those studies are available. Uh, the, the Commission on Revenue Allocation has made present public presentations even before Parliament. Uh, for instance, National Assembly has 349 members. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have only maybe 30, uh, you require about uh, 130, uh, if it's a third, uh, to achieve the, the two-third <coughs> rule. So if the public elect fewer women in the National Assembly, and then if you were to comply with the law, uh, as Ms. Lichuma was saying, then we need to have about 100 and something women, about 100 and above, uh, to, to, to top up the gap. That means that the wage bill will go up and we will have a double-decker parliament. This is the implication. So I think because of the struggles of women, uh, the historical struggles of women in this country, and even women participated in passing this constitution in a referendum in 2010, we need to find a balance, and the balance can only be achieved through political parties. Mm -hmm. Through political parties. But isn't that a double speak, my brother? On one hand, you want political parties to be given money to do capacity building for women. 
But when we've, we're giving you a system that is very open and has been used across the world, you say it will be more resources will go into wages. But more resources will also have to go to the political parties for what you're saying to, to finance, that. to education. So let's not have the double speak. It was not the double speak. I was saying about the research of CRA. Yeah, mm -hmm. was, yeah was, but you've analyzing. been calling for resources, more resources to come to political parties. But maybe because and you know when we're are, thinking yeah, about the... A, he's a spokesperson of ANC, of and course, And you know now. when we think about... <laughs> uh, uh, when we think about implementation of the Constitution, it's only the women who have been taken for a ride. The Constitution did provide for many offices. Constitutional commissions, I chaired one, they all are in place. It's only that lately now we don't have some commissioners in some of the commissions. Uh, 47 counties, we have 47 counties. 47 county assemblies, 47 county assemblies were established. We even have gone further and have created bodies that were not even in the Constitution. Uh, the speakers forum, the attorneys forum, and all are getting on that money. But when you say implement an affirmative action for women, give them the nomination, it becomes an issue of resources. Where are we getting the resources to do all the other issues? I think it's just because we've not decided that women matter. We have not decided as a country that women matter. And until we think about Women equals to development. And there are many studies you can find. Look at Mackenzie. Mackenzie releases those uh, Women Matter reports every year. Countries that have more women in leadership are prone to do very well. So as a country, we must revisit the narrative. Well, it's he, not a good narrative. But he, he talked about the tokenism that, uh, you know, uh, as it were, that, Yes, if we also give you these seats as just nominations, this is purely tokenism. And you know, if we be also collect this discussion to the corporate level, the board levels, representations, mm -hmm. you can borrow from the Scandinavian countries yeah. that right now uh, it is a quarter system that, yes, they have to have mm -hmm. a female representations in the boards, as it were. Like Norway is, is at 40%. 40%. All boards, public, but, but, 40%. But, but you know the phenomenon that really comes mm. with that. We have the phenomenon of uh, what? The golden skirt effect. That, yes, these quarters will, yes, assign, you know, those seats to the women. But when they're on board, they're just twiddling their thumbs and uh, sitting pretty, as it were. No effect at all on the ground. Sitting pretty? I have served on boards in this country and internationally. And I will tell you, we have very many experienced Kenyan women who can serve on boards. Let me bring you home. Kepsa. Do you know Kepsa women have taken over Kepsa? The chair, the vice chair. You, you read that. And women are coming. And, and, and let's not also confuse. In this era and time, we have very learned women as well as men. And boards that have women, women are normally very keen in terms of financial report, in terms, you know, I have seen men who arrive at a meeting and that's when they are opening the envelope of the minutes that were given to them to read. They're too busy. But a woman would have read and underlined. So we have many, many women who are board ready. An organization from Norway through FKE has trained very many women. I trained there as well to serve on boards. Women on board is another network that has trained numerous women and they're ready to serve on boards. Yeah, so it, we, we, we're not talking about just women coming from the kitchen and being placed in boardrooms. No, 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 no. Even I think in political parties, you are very learned women. So I think let's get it right that we have competent women and as we are seeking the affirmative action it's just that we said patrick is holding us back we women given the position will serve perfectly well yeah um i, I want to also hack it back a bit uh, to where you are mentioning you know some of these international instruments that uh, we've ratified ourselves to and i wonder uh, but great loss to understand why but, but put a protocol yes we have uh, um, the international, the affirmative action, uh, the, the UN convention uh, as well that we have ratified to. But we have all these things and you say uh, there's a problem with the, with, with the implementation. <clears throat> I'm a great loss to understand as well why we will the commission um, of um, the CRC that is actually headed by Jeremiah Kioni 
come up with another bill and yet they're not implementing this particular bill of the gender parity bill that has been there in the house is there any rhyme or reason why we should be having this sig bill in the first place uh, first of all yes uh Debali, you have to read article 100 of the constitution it says that parliament shall pass legislations to give effect uh, to the affirmative action uh, uh, i mean the affirmative action clauses that are in the constitution so it is perfectly in order to have a bill sponsoring that but as to whether that bill is constitutional <clears throat> and it is supporting the affirmative action that is in, in Article 27.8, uh, is another debate. We have had several bills. Uh, you've had uh, the bill, uh, the Chepkonga bill, 2015, the Duale bill that has been defeated uh, severally. Uh, you remember the time when you were saying we cannot nominate slay queens uh, into parliament. Uh, and, and you've had Article 177 of the Constitution on mm -hmm. county assemblies has been affected. County assemblies are... Uh, gender compliant. Actually, if you look at uh, the county assemblies, if a political party gets two elected MCAs, yes. you get one nomination slot, another set of two, another nomination slot. So that is the principle, and uh, we are complying with that Article 177 of the Constitution on the composition of county assemblies. So the sticky issue here is on appointive positions and Article 97 and 98 of the Constitution, because that is where we are, no, we are not complying. And that's why we are discussing what can we do to make uh, these things happen. First of all, there is something that uh, I've observed in this country. The largest function or the most critical function of IBC is civic education. But you realize that uh, when during the electoral cycle, when IBC should be given adequate support, especially through funding, to do continuous civic education on, on, on who is a good leader and how to elect a good leader to the public, IBC will be given billions in the last year mm -hmm. uh, of the election, towards the election. So by that time, IBC does not even have enough time uh, to register voters, to carry out uh, civic education, which is very critical. In, uh, I mean, it, for me, uh, I think that is one of the uh, critical functions IBC should be performing. So they, they are left str uh, sorry, stranded uh, to try to figure out how to use this money and do most of the functions uh, as they are required constitutionally. So what we are discussing here is 97 and 98 and how can we comply with it. Already the court has pronounced itself in this case. The former Chief Justice, uh, David Maraga, there is an advisory opinion standing uh, on the desk of the President yes. to dissolve Parliament for not complying with those provisions. So the President himself uh, might find himself in breach of the law uh, if he doesn't comply with that. But I could understand why the President uh, is in a fix uh, in terms of now uh, implementing the advisory opinion by Justice Maraga. Because these are sticky, particular issues, uh, as it, she has said, uh, to comply with. So there is need to have, to change the attitudes of our people, uh, yeah. the masses, uh, that women can. And, and by the way, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm not... But that particular dissolution, uh, I, I'm not yeah, seeing will subject the, us to a constitutional crisis. Yes, definitely as, there, as will, there will be a constitutional crisis in this country if parliament is dissolved today. Uh, Which if, is the if, section that is making parliament to be dissolved? Sorry? The section that is making parliament to be dissolved. It, it, it is non-compliance with the, the two-third gender rule. Which is in the constitution. Constitution, 97 so clearly, and we choose, men in this country choose the sections to implement. Uh, and not to implement others. Now, the locals, it, we are, it is the president now who holds the keys because the constitution says the chief justice will advise the president. Now, the president has now to implement... Uh, uh, the advisor of the, uh, but, the chief but, justice. But is it, isn't he also in a very, you know, a dicey place as it were? So, yes, you want to implement this, uh, but on the other hand, you're facing a constitutional crisis, which is a greater good. You have to save a country from a, uh, from a con constitutional crisis or to implement that because still, you still have time, given that you had an adversary opinion from the courts, that it can be implemented progressively. No, no, it had a time frame. Five years. Mm -hmm. It had a time frame. Yeah, it lapsed. It, it lapsed. lapsed. It, it lapsed. lapsed. Yeah. So we have, in All fact, right. like even the political parties is talking about uh, political parties being told they must comply with the two-third gender rule. Remember, it was uh, Mativo's uh, judgment yes. on the Katiba Institute mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. So all these things are uh, supported by the law, supported by court decisions. But men in this country have decided they will not implement things related to women. 
Uh, how, how do we deal with that? Debal, mm -hmm. there, there's a time internally mm -hmm. we were having this discussion from the political, the forums of political parties that what if we adopt the zebra system where man, woman, man, woman uh, in preparing the party lists uh, for elections so that we have more, we have a 50-50 uh, through the zebra lists. But uh, remember, political parties govern their own affairs uh, within their own internal constitutions. But, but isn't that really captured also with the BBI? Uh, in now, the Senate. BBI, in the Senate. In the Senate. In the Senate. 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 Yeah. Yeah, the proposal on BBI on the Senate is that it's 50-50. One woman, uh, one man as a senator. And in my opinion, that is also watering down the institution of the Senate because uh, why have, who will be the, the head of the delegation from a county? Uh, I think that was a, a direct shortcut in trying to cure these things. Because the moment you have two senators representing one county, the fundamental question is, who is the head of the delegation? Both of them. Uh, because once you have two There people, will be no delegated voting, because all that has been amended. Yes, okay. That, so that, there's no delegated voting. We are staring at a, 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 a scenario where BBI might not go through, uh, because you know the time, the, the time frames and the implementation of these things. Uh, BBI is not adequately prepared to handle a referendum. The current budget proposal that is standing before parliament, there is no budget to do a referendum. Uh, the Minister for Finance has not proposed any budget to conduct a referendum because a referendum is another general election. Uh, so we are setting it up as a possibility of BBI not even going through. Uh, so I think uh, there is a national crisis in the process of perfecting our democracy. We need to answer to these questions, uh, including the one we are speaking to. <laughs> How can we be able to uh, progressively tap into the women. And by the way, if you look at the, the recent census results, women constitute 50% of this population. So how can we even mobilize and assist uh, women trade uh, women leaders uh, to go out there and galvanize the votes from even their fellow women? Because they have the numbers. Remember in 2013, we had a powerful woman in this country whom I call a woman trailblazer in the name of Martha Karua on the ballot. Uh, running for president. But how many votes did she gather? She moved around this country uh, with a political party called NAC Kenya. Uh, she didn't gather enough votes uh, to even become the president. In 2017, she went to Kirinyaga to run for, for governor. Uh, she didn't get it, uh, but I, I, li I, li I really love her because of her tenacity uh, in politics. She went all the way to the Supreme Court challenging the election of uh, a fellow woman uh, uh, in the name of Anne, uh, Anne, Anne Mumbai. So this and now she's even at the, at the international, the international at the regional even, level. Yes, at the regional level. Yep. So this is a tenacious woman whom many women can admire. Now, I will not say that men in this country don't support women. Trust me, I'm the last born in my family, and I love my mother so much. <coughs> uh, I have a daughter, so if, 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 if I'm, I'm seeing a, a daughter, uh, a woman in my daughter, why would I support women? This is a nationalistic agenda that we must pursue, and the solutions are simple. Either we change the electoral system or support political parties. Uh, she suggested the proportional representation system uh, that is happening in South Africa. The proportional representation system works well uh, because political parties submit a closed list before the general election. So it is easier uh, to achieve gender parity through a proportional representation system by compelling political parties even to adopt a zebra system. Uh, in their party list before they submit to the electoral commission. So those are the solutions uh, that we need to explore, and this must become a national conversation. Mm -hmm. Let me come back to you. Uh, you do you want know that BBI, he talked about, uh, why I was talking about the women issues. Eh? Yes. I know you may never understand the, 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 the dramas that were there in terms of including Article 177 from the county assembly to make the national assembly an equivalent of what we do when we don't get enough women elected. Do you know after the launch in Bomas, we had a subsequent amendment mm -hmm. to the BBI, the constitution. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. What was launched still left Article 97 unimplemented. We had no formula for achieving the two-third gender rule. We lobbied day and night a small group of women. It was tucked in. And it was tucked in. So we always must be a second thought. Why? I mean, why? Is it that women, and clearly everyone will say, I have a mother, I love my mother, she's my role model. I have, 
Yeah. Why aren't we putting it in the law for the women of this country to enjoy? But Lichuba, you, had a, also Lichuba, you had a sporting chance, you as a chair of, uh, I did. Yeah, of mm. Angek, uh, yeah. to actually do this. And I wondered, yes, what, what, how far did you push this envelope I drafted yourself? All the bills. Where did you get the frustration? I drafted all the bills. They came to the house. Were well, they passed? They weren't passed. I did everything. Another day, I went to State House with the team. If 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 uh -huh, we if, didn't if, make if it. the tenant claims IBC is not doing an effective job because yeah the disbursement of funds for civil yeah. ed education comes in a bit late. What was also you know we launched an advocacy uh, strategy with the president in in KICC through Thimbili is our mama. You remember that we came to the debate with you in Nation and we talked about it. But it gets to a level and I will call it as it is. There is no political goodwill in this country to implement the affirmative action, period. I don't think there's any other thing. Even however hard political parties try, right now, of course, they've been told by court, when you're submitting your list to YBC, make sure the two-third gender rule is met. Their party has their majority area of operation. They might give it to men. And to fill up, in other places, they bring women. So when the party list goes, uh, it has women. But they, it will not guarantee that they will be elected. We all agreeing we haven't educated uh, women enough and men to vote in women. That is not going to change. And so globally, the affirmative action comes in to cushion. So they are brought in like now the way we have brought them in in the county assemblies, given time frame, we are giving you 15 years or 10 years, this affirmative action will be taken away. So prove it. And clearly, I think like even your party, there are many women you had nominated last, and they went and vied and they won. So given, given the opportunity, we'll go campaign, but the affirmative action cushioned them. Millie Odiambo came in through affirmative action, you remember. But then she went, polished herself, she went and has been elected twice. I know she will be elected again. Yeah, polishing. Yeah. And it wasn't that also the function of the women rep? Yeah. Yeah, that you come through that particular clause, uh, you know, you, you or the affirmative action, you polish yourself, you, you learn experientially, yeah. you, you actually, you know, gain the experience. Then yeah. finally, we have the sunset clause, we do away with the women rep. Exactly. W w wasn't that the idea? No, no, no. Initially, like right now, the constitution as it stands now, it has no sunset clause. Yeah, it hasn't, but wasn't that the idea initially? The idea initially was, yes, let's give them a time. It's just it's like, I, I keep, as a gender expert, I keep using the swimming. You know, if we went to the uh, swimming pool, you have been swimming as men for many years since the independence. From the river. Uh, from the river. Uh, of course, for me as a woman, if I was found in the river culturally, you know, Patrick, he comes in. How would I even think of removing my cloth to go to the swimming pool? So you've been swimming all along. So women have just now learned to jump into that pool. And you're expecting that they will go giving stars the way you're giving? No way. Give affirmative action an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Allow women to come in. To tend a pole pole, we'll be taught how to kick, how to to give the water, and finally we'll be better swimmers. Fantastic, fantastic. I I, I know we can actually talk our hours on end regarding this particular uh, topic that is very ticklish, and I know and is very dear to you as well, and Nathaniel and Lichuma. But I want just to get your headline thoughts as we are uh, coming to a close. Have we crossed the Rubicon? Because it sounds to me like, oh, you're saying there's nothing much we can do. There's no uh, you know, political will to implement affirmative action in this country. The gender parity rule is still you know, hanging in the air, as it were. Have we crossed the Rubicon? Briefly. Uh, it's a bit difficult to say, but just allow me to say, if we got political goodwill, all the rest will be history. It will shake into place. It will shake into place. Fantastic. Nathaniel. It is not all gloomy, Debal. Uh, women have made serious strides. Today, we have the first woman, CJ, and her mm. deputy, uh, uh, Mwilu, is also a woman. So we have two powerful women leading the judiciary as an institution. So it is not all gloomy. We have the rank and file of the judiciary, many powerful women judges. Uh, so I think progressively, we are uh, setting out we can do more uh, as a country. Uh, currently, um, I'm running for member of parliament next year in North Mogrango, and I have many women who are competing me, and I'm a young person. I'm not complaining why they are running against me, but I'm just encouraging them. In fact, I'm even inviting them 
to join my party. There is one who was a former uh, CEC in the county government. Uh, I've, she's called Janet, I've told her, come and compete me in ANC party so that whoever wins the party primaries gets the ticket and we all pledge to support you. So we must also set out deliberately to educate the public. It must become a nationalistic uh, agenda and a conversation uh, that over time we must believe in women leadership. But we also recognize that we must run into the danger at some point where we will have more women leaders than men. And then we will start the conversation that we must also start having affirmative action for men. <laughs> so this must be a tricky balance thank you. Uh, as a country as we go forward into the future. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And be sure, of course, I'll give you uh, an invoice for taking this uh, platform, you know, to, yeah, the advantage of it, to campaign uh, and <laughs> yeah. tell us that you're running. Yeah, you, a nifty way of coming in between and all seeking votes as well. Yes. Yeah, just on a lighter we note. We take but, all the platform. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but I really appreciate such a very interesting conversation. Uh, well, Fred Chuma, I really appreciate a former, uh, you know, chairperson of the National Gender and Equality Commission and uh, Nathaniel Mungare, national spokesperson, <coughs> ANC Party. I really appreciate you your input. Us. Thank Fantastic. You. And thank you thank also you. for watching Siesa Bomba, where we have, you know, relevant conversation just to try and declutter the noise that we have in our political scene in the country and bring issues to perspective. I am Dibala Nair.